Hello. Um, this should be a very brief video on how to implement a R-type style control scheme in Unity 3D using C Sharp. Um, I'm going to be using iTween here. So if you're unfamiliar with iTween, I really recommend it. It's a free uh, library for for movement for movement of game objects, interpolation between points. It's really powerful and it's very free. So I would give it a shot, take a look at it. It's pretty pretty cool if you don't want to worry about the implementation of it. In another video later we might go over how we would implement something like it ourselves, but for now it's a very quick and easy way of getting things done in Unity. So like I said it's gonna be a very quick video. Um I'm gonna be working on this game throughout the next few weeks, so I'll be posting more videos as I progress with it just keeping everybody up to speed but this should be one script maybe a couple of lines of code so let's get to it I'm gonna make a C-sharp script here we will call it player controller or ship controller okay <clears throat> we'll open that up and we there's nothing that needs to be instanti um, initialized here the update function. I'm assuming that we have a, a basic understanding of how Unity works. If you don't, uh, I might make some more basic videos, but if you don't know what the update function is, update is called once per frame. Um, this is where you'd want to have any kind of movement code, anything that needs to be, you know, your position needs to be updated once, once per frame if it's continuously moving. Uh, anything else that needs to be updated, you would do it here because it's called over and over again throughout the life of the game. We know if we look back in uh, the space frame, see it's going to be moving in two axes only, not three. It can move left and right across the x axis and up and down across the y axis. And that's it. The There's no motion across the z axis. So, come back here. We can we know that we're not going to have to worry about any Z motion. So let's go ahead and make an, a new vector 3. We're not making a vector 2, um, even though we're only using two of the, the three axes, axes because transform that position is a vector 3. Um, that's just an implementation of what, what the transform does. So even though we are only using two values, we're still going to use a vector 3. So vector 3 new position, the new position they're going to want after the end of this frame equals new vector 3 and takes three parameters and so the first parameter is likely going to be well it's definitely going to have something to do with whatever the input is in Unity to get the input there's an input uh, <coughs> an input class <coughs> sorry Unity engine input from there it exposes get axis and since the first parameter is the x the x axis we know we're going to want the x axis to correspond with the horizontal so that just means it depends on what kind of what kind of input it is if it's a joystick that just means left or right on the joystick on a keyboard it can be the right arrow left arrow you can set it up however you want but right now it's set up as the arrow keys by default, that's what it is. The arrow keys or the WASD keys. So we want to get that. And that value, the hor the get axis value, is gonna go from negative one to one depending on depending on how far to the left negative or how far to the right positive it, the joystick is or whether what key you're holding or whatnot. So we have that. So that's going to give you negative one to one. Um, I guess we can go up here and say public int speed. Just a value that we can change later and adjust because we're going to be taking this input and multiplying that by speed. So now it's not instead of oscillating between negative one and one, it's going between negative speed and speed going back and forth at the same speed and 
time dot delta time. I'm going to go over that a little bit later. Um, but for now, you can just think of it as a way to make sure that instead of this happening on a per frame basis, it happens per millis per second. Uh, I'm going to go into detail more later on that. But um, <clears throat> so that's this entire thing here between input dot get axis times squeeze out type times time dot delta time that's the first parameter that's your x parameter now you see we need a y parameter and a z parameter y it's pretty sim pretty similar input dot get axis vertical this time times speed times time dot delta time and if you want to have a different vertical speed than horizontal speed this is where you would put the values and for the last value, we can just say it is. Oh, Hold on. before we do that, we got one very important thing <clears throat> here. Got X. I'm going to go over this right now. Okay, why did I put that? The reason I put, I added a transform that position at x was because if we don't, we're not really moving anywhere. We need to add this new value we're getting, the this value of however many meters which we got in speed. We're multiplying that by whether it's negative or positive. If we're going forward or backwards we need to add that to the current position or else we're not going to go anywhere. So we're taking the current position and adding this new delta, this new change in position. Same thing here. Taking the current position and adding this new delta here. If I forgot that, then we wouldn't be going anywhere. And then lastly, since we're not doing anything in the Z, in Z we can just say transform.position.z because we're not adding anything to it. <clears throat> so that seems right. Let's see if we have any errors or anything. Oh, yeah, well, there are no errors, but now we have this new position. So what are you going to do with it? We can assign this new position to transform that position here. So we created it, and we're going to go ahead <clears throat> and take this newly created position and assign it to our object. So let's go ahead and just connect the script and let's see what happens. Alright. So we're moving now. And I'm controlling it by using the arrow keys kind of fast. That's what this is for. Control the speed. See that's smoother. So you can see it a little bit better now. All right. So although this is working, um, you can see that it's very static. In that you can definitely see it's just one model moving back and forth. It's it moves around, but. It can kind of it kind of looks weird. It would be better if it did a little bit of rotation, and that's what we're gonna do with uh, iTween. So we'll get out of this, and let's head back to Mono Develop. And now we can create a new vector three. Same same thing that we did here. New position, except this time it's gonna be a new rotation. Equals new vector three, and. This one, it's going to be, I believe it's going to be, yeah, 0, 90, because the way the rotations work is that it's a vector 3. Um, you have your x rotation, your y rotation, and your z rotation. Um, we're hard setting the values of these 0, 90, just because if you go back into Unity and look at the spaceship, that's what these values are, 0, 90. This is what it's going to be rotating on. 
because if this is the z angle of the ship we want to rotate it across that axis see so these are hard set to what their values are supposed to be and then z is what's going to be changing so we have 0 90 and the z value is going to be again dependent on the input get axis and we're going to do it vertical here so when it goes up it should turn one way down it should turn the other way and you can let's just hard code 45 nah, let's banking angle here um, banking angle equals say 45 degrees okay times banking angle and time time that well let's just let's just see how it feels here uh, what am I missing new iteration for new vector three I guess I am I want too many open parentheses. All right, so there you go. You have the new rotation, and now we're going to use iTween for the first time. In iTween, there's a pretty useful function, uh, rotate update, and it basically rotates. It's it's a rotate function that you can use in the update function. Um, so it constantly adjust to, to try to get to a certain angle, rotate towards a certain angle given a certain time. And actually you can put it in banking speed. Set that for five now. I'm just guessing numbers, we'll see how it looks later. So given a certain speed, which is our banking speed, a given time, how long it takes for it to reach that angle we want, which is 45 degrees, um, we can slowly rotate there. So that's what rotate update does for us. Um, you want to rotate. You see, you pass the target, which is the game object itself. All right. A hash table of arguments. So iTween has its own hash table. Parameters that we can set. The um, first parameter is going to be rotation. And we already set up what the rotation is going to be right here, new rotation. We just put that in there. Time, which is going to be the banking speed. And I believe that's it. All right, is local. Make sure it's a local rotation. I think it's set by default, but well, might as well be safe. And. So it's rotating at five angles per second. Suppose, you know, just make it a little bit smoother. And I think that's about it. Oops. And let's see if that works. Perfect. So you now see the ship is not just moving back and forth, but when it turns, it kind of smoothly goes back and forth between those two angles. So that's, I think I'm going to stop there for now. The video was a lot longer than I expected. But um, yeah, I just hope you can see at least some of the power of iTween. Um, iTween has a lot of documentation online. Some they're selling now, um, but just a lot of examples you can find. And so just, just if you just go over the parameters that you can pass into this hash table here, it's pretty powerful and it makes a lot of this very easy. So with just a few lines of code, we have a pretty functional control scheme for a nice R-type style shooter. So I'm going to be posting videos as the, pro as the project progresses, but I think it looks promising. So see you next time.